Algebra 2, Transformations of Parent Functions Practice. First of all, we're going to look at these different functions and equations and just name the parent function. So you want to look at your notes and look at the math that's happening in the function and decide what type is the parent function. So f of x equals negative x plus 1 squared. So right here I notice I have a squared. That's going to indicate to me that this is a transformed quadratic parent function of y or f of x equals x squared. Now let's just work our way down. y equals 5 minus x squared. So I'm looking at my variable and again the math that's happening. I have another squared so that's a parent quadratic function. f of x equals absolute value of x minus 9 plus 4. You can hear me say it. So notice that the math around the variable x is the absolute value bars. So this is a transformed absolute value function. y equals 3. Now see that there's no x, just the constant. So if you hear that, that is a constant function. So that's the parent function. Next one, y equals 5x. So we just have x to the first power. And that means that this function's parent um, would be linear. And then finally, f of x equals 4 times the absolute value of x. So see the math that's happening to x is the absolute value bars. So the parent function is absolute value. So you're going to look at the math that's happening to the variable to determine what the parent function is. And then you're going to choose of those four that we've been studying. Here I have put together, with an absolute value function, all of the possible places where the number values can change. So this also applies to quadratic. So I'm not going to also do this with the quadratic because um, where these values are, a, h, and k, and these stand for numbers, are exactly the same with a quadratic function. So, <clears throat> here we've got, a ne um, first of all, positive or negative, and we think of that as separate from our a value. So, if it's positive, sorry, if it's a negative, then this is going to reflect, and we're just going to assume that the entire output has been multiplied by that negative, so it's going to reflect over the x-axis. The number that's either added or subtracted right inside by the x, so inside the math of the function, is going to shift it left or right. So if the value is subtracted, it's actually going to shift it to the right. If the value is added, it's going to shift it to the left. And then finally, notice the k value is added or it can be subtracted at the end. So if it's added, it's going to shift the graph up. If it's subtracted, it's going to shift the graph down. Sometimes these transformations happen one at a time. Sometimes they happen all at once. Now there's one more that I want to talk about, and this is the a value. We think of the a and the negative as two separate things. So with our a value, if the value of it, so we're going to ignore the negative, so is greater than 1, then that is going to stretch the graph. So either make it skinnier or steeper if it's a line. It is not letting me make that H. Come on. So stretch. All right, if the A value is less than 1, but it's not going to be less than 0, so just a fractional amount, then that's going to be a compression, or it will compress the graph, make it wider, um, or flatter. So on these we're going to write a function, a new g of x func function for each transformation from the absolute value parent function. So f of x equals the absolute value of x. And I have written this to help, rem help you remember where those values can go. So we want to do a translation two units down. Now my numbers are a little bit messed up so just find um, the one on your note sheet that corresponds with the words that you see. So <clears throat> that's going to be our k value. 
Remember, it's at the end of the function. So our new function will give it a new letter. So we will say g of x, and then we'll just keep the absolute value of x, but we want to shift it down. So we're going to introduce a k value of minus 2. Now a vertical stretch. So that is going to be an a value of 2. And notice that it is greater than 1. So that's going to be a stretch. Now we have two things. So translation up 5, so that's a k value. And to the right, 2. That's an h value. Remember to shift it to the right. We're going to subtract. So our equation is going to look like we're going to open up our absolute value bar, x, and then to the right 2. So we're going to subtract 2 and then up 5. So we're going to add 5. A reflection over the x-axis. So that means we're going to multiply num negative 1 by the entire output. And that will make all our y's that were positive now negative. So <clears throat> that is just the absolute value of x. So that goes on the outside like this. And then finally, a vertical compression of a half. So that's an a value, and it just tells us what it is, a half, and it goes on the outside of the absolute value. And then these new equations do all these transformations as asked. So over the x value or x-axis, up 5, right 2, a vertical stretch by 2, and then 2 units down. Let's try some transformations from non-parent functions. So we start with the line f of x equals 2x plus 1. We want to move up 3. So just refresh um, your memory, what that means. So if that's a, h, or k, well, if we want to move up or down, that's a k value. So up means we're going to have a k value of, let's try that again. We're going to add 3. So our new function, f of x, g of x, I mean, is going to take our original, and then we're going to add 3. And then we'll just clean that up. We can go ahead and combine that 1 and 3. So our new function, g of x equals 2x plus Now let's transform some non-parent functions. So number 1, we start with f of x equals 2x plus 1. We want to move up 3. So look at your notes. Notice that to go up or down, it's a k value, and we're going to have a positive or plus 3. So our new function will have plus 3 at the end, so it'll be g of x equals 2x plus 4. Now with number 2, f of x equals the square root of x, sorry, the absolute value of x minus 2, we're going to reflect across the y-axis. Look back at your notes. Remember that you're going to multiply negative 1 by the input only, and then move left 5. So that's an h value, but we're going to do the opposite. We're going to add 5. So our new function, g of x, will look like absolute value of, and then just negative 1 multiplied by x minus 2, but then we're going to add 5. So finally, g of x equals the absolute value of negative x plus 3. Now let's look at graphs and let's describe the transformation. So from red to blue. So first of all, the red, let's write down what parent function that is. Notice that it's a straight line, so it's going to be linear. It's not horizontal, so it's not a constant function. So it is just going to be a linear function. And then look and see, it has moved down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now the graph of this line, or I'm sorry, the equation of this line, we can go ahead and write it. So we want the slope from one point to the next. We're going to go up 2 and over 1. So I have a slope of 2 over 1, or 2x. And then it's crossing at 0. So my b value is simply 0. So from there, this is going to be my g function. This will be my f function. That has been shifted down 5, so now we know what to do with the equation. We're just going to subtract 5, and that will be 
the equation and to describe it, it has been shifted down 5. All right, on the next one, this transformation from red to blue. So again, we have linear functions. We have a steep line for red, and then we've got a line that's flatter on that thicker blue line. So when you get a line that is um, flatter than its original, that has been a compression. Now let's write the equation of the red line, and I'm going to switch to red this time so it'll help. So f of x equals, and then let's find the slope. So we have to go up 1, 2, and then over 1. So we've got a slope of 2 over 1, or 2x, and it's crossing at 0. So our b value of 0. Now the blue line is a little flatter, and it's up 1 and over 2. So our slope is 1 half x. Notice our b value hasn't changed. So going from 2 to 1 half, we have to divide by 4. So this is a compression by 1 fourth because 2 times a fourth is a half. Notice the next set of graphs are our v-shaped graphs. So these are absolute value. And our red function, or red graph, it's just right. Um, it's been shifted, so notice it's not on the origin. It's over 5. And then it opens upward and just uh, goes up 1 and over 1, just like the parent function. So this equation is shifted to the right 5. Now, there's quite a bit going on between that and the blue function. So it has been reflected because notice that has been flipped over. So I'm going to write all these things down here. So we have it's over the um, x-axis. So we will call this an x-axis reflection. And then the graph is skinnier. So this is a shrink. And then that's all. It hasn't been shift up or down. So if we were to write the equation, we need to, for an x-axis reflection, we need to multiply the output by a negative. And then we also need to multiply it by a factor. So now if we figure out how much it has been shrunk, so we move 1, 2, 3 over, over 1. So we go up 3 and over 1. We'll make that negative so it reflects. And then x minus 5. It did not move from there. So it's an x-axis reflection. It is a shrink. And then these would be the original, so the red equation for that function, and then g of x would be our new one that does those two transformations. All right, and then finally we've got two absolute value again. So we're going from red to blue. So let's talk about the red function. From the origin, which is here, it's been shifted to the right two and up 1, 2, 3. Now it's just up 1 and over 1, so that's normal with the parent function. So we need to go right 2, so we're going to subtract 2, and then up 3. Okay, so that gives us our equation. Now let's just write down what's happened from the red graph to the blue graph. <laughs> so from red to blue we have shifted left 2, so 1, 2, and then gone up 1, 2, 3. Now we haven't done a shrink or a compress because it's still just simply up 1 over 1. So to our equation left 2, so that means we're going to Take what we started with, so x minus 2, and then we're going to add 2. 
And then we're going to take the plus 3 that we started with, but add 3 more. So once we clean that up, we'll have the absolute value of x plus 6.